Before starting this tutorial, I just wanted to let you know that you can find a lot of the information in the description box. The whole pattern is written down there and I also wrote down the um, timestamps for the different elements that you need to make. So I hope that that makes it a bit easier for you to follow the tutorial. Have fun! Hi, my name is Lisa and welcome back to a new video. A while ago I actually made a tulip crochet with me video and I was wearing this um, cardigan in the intro and ever since that people have been asking if I can please make a tutorial on that and of course your wish is my command so here I am going to show you how I made this I will make a few alterations because now I will be making it in uh, different colors I'll be doing it in more of a cherry blossom theme so I'm thinking of making like the whole cardigan white and then making the flowers Pink, but we will see uh, how everything will go and I will take you along with me this will be a tutorial I'm not the best at explaining stuff so I'll try and hopefully you can follow along with me and if not you can of course let me know and I will answer all of your questions in that sense so first of all for the materials I will be using um, this white color as the main color. It's the same as the white of the cuffs and the flowers in this one. And this is a mix of acrylic and wool. It's a yarn that recommends 7 to 8 millimeter knitting needles. So it's quite thick. I love very thick yarns. It's uh, good. Like always the chunky ones are the best. Uh, <laughs> And this is from a store, I think it's only ex it only exists in the Netherlands, but if you live in the Netherlands it's from Zeeman and it's the Julia yarn. But I will link something similar down below so you can purchase it as well. Then I'll use the pink for the, the flowers, uh, same pink as this pink. And then I have Katia Canada, a more darker pink version also for the flowers. As far as knitting needles, I have 8mm uh, circular ones that I will also just use for the straight part because it's much easier to knit on circular needles anyways. And then I have like smaller 7mm ones for the cuffs, mainly for the sleeves. Ah, uh, just to mention, the flowers, I will crochet those flowers because I'm not sure how to knit flowers. But I will show you how I do the flowers um, later on as well, of course. Let's get started! So I'm actually going to knit the first sleeve now and then I will show you a tutorial on the second sleeve and on the rest of it. Um, just a note that this is not a full tutorial, like I won't show you how to knit, like the basic things. The things you need to know for this are um, how to cast on, how to make more stitches, like how to increase stitches, how to cast off, and a basic like stockinette stitch, like knit and purl stitch. So I hope that this is clear and I will link down a great tutorial down below um, with all the basics that you can learn for those who are completely new. And I would say this project is a like beginner knit friendly project. And I am making it on circular needles but you can also make it on straight needles, then you just have to sew in like the sleeves like down here. I prefer working on circular needles because it's a bit faster for me, but yeah. And these parts could also completely be done on straight needles anyways. And I normally wear a size small to medium. This sweater is very oversized, so I'm pretty sure that with a large, uh, you could it also would fit. Um, I will, in the description, write down a bit more about the sizing and how you can, how many stitches you could do for making a bigger size, like how many stitches per centimeter. One sleeve is now completely finished. I'm this is I'm already wearing balloon sleeves and I'm putting more balloon sleeves over it, but uh, I finished it a couple of days ago actually. 
and I will now show you exactly how to make the sleeves and of course the rest of the cardigan as well and now that I'm thinking about it it wasn't that smart of me to choose white as the color because white shows uh, really terribly on camera so I really hope that it will be alright in terms of showing you um, but I'll try to do my best and fingers crossed hopefully it will be uh, fine eventually okay so firstly I'm taking these smaller knitting needles in a 7 millimeter one and they are quite short so it's easy to work on the cuffs I personally use the long tail method to cast on stitches so that's what I will do I take like quite a long length I first make a slip knot and then I will cast on 26 stitches one well two in total Okay, so I have 26 stitches now that I cast it on. And now it's time to connect them in the round. So these ones, although they're very small, the ne needles, they're still too large um, to go all the way around. So the way I like to do it, but there's plenty of uh, ways to do this. The way I like to do it is to just take, like, to divide them into three the stitches, or kind of into three and I just pull through like partially here and partially oh it's always a bit complicated in the beginning especially now that I'm filming this wait I'll do it off camera so it's a bit easier for me so, okay, this is what it looks like now. You just see I pull through here and here. Uh, if there are better ways to do this, please let me know because I'm also curious to learn more about this. And now you can connect them in the round. So, I find it easiest for the first two uh, stitches to take both of the strands to connect them. So, I just go in words like this. I go behind the back because I do it now in a continental way and I go through. So for now I'm taking two of the strands and since I'm doing the ribbing the next stitch has to be a purl one so I take this strand in front of me and I go in front. Oh, and the beginning is always a bit difficult and I go through so first two stitches I did with two of the strands and now it's important to take this one like this is the tail this we will no longer use this for now so it's just the long strand that is connected to the ball so yeah I just did a purl stitch so now it's back to a knit stitch And for this you just keep purl knit, you just keep on um, doing it one by one to make the ribbing. And this will get easier once you get more rows on your needles. Just make sure that you don't twist the stitches that's the most um, common mistake uh, just pay attention to that but again the more rows you do the easier that becomes and you do this ribbing for 
10 rows. And now it's a little bit later on the day, so the lighting is a bit different. But I have done the 10 rows of ribbing for the cuffs. Um, as you can see, it fits very nicely around my wrist. And now I need to do the increases to actually make the balloon sleeve. Like, as you see here, I've made increases when ending the cuffs. So the first thing I need to do is actually transfer from these um, smaller knitting needles to larger ones. These are 7mm and this is 8mm. Unfortunately, I don't have interchangeable needles, so I need to um, like add the stitches into the other knitting needles. And let's see, the way I like to do that is by just picking them up, not oh, picking them up, not like this, but the other way around. So this like like you would be doing a pearl stitch and I just pick all of them up one by one and transfer them to the larger needles okay so now they are all transferred to uh, the bigger needles and now, since we are working in a round, you can just do only a knit stitch because you don't need to knit and purl um, when you want to have a sock net stitch on circular needles, which is the best thing ever. <laughs> so I like to first um, just do one round of uh, a normal sock net stitch without increasing. And I'm going to place a stitch marker just because uh, that's a bit easier for me to see what I'm doing then. So I place a stitch marker on them. It's a bit tight because you, of course, first use smaller needles. So it's a bit difficult to get into them. Okay, so you just do this uh, for the whole round, just normal knit stitch. So now I did knit one row of normal sock net stitch and now it's time to actually increase stitches. Um, you have 26 stitches now, or I have 26 stitches now, and I will, um, for every knit, make an increase. So in total I will have 52 stitches. Okay, so the easiest way to increase is, from I find, is that there's a bar in between the stitches, as you see here. You take this needle underneath that, wait, underneath that, and then you take the right needle like this in the back. Take it. Oh, I can't show this well on camera. <laughs> like this and then just knit it like you would usually do it's a bit difficult in the beginning especially but it gets better throughout time and of course there's a tutorial on it that I will show you which is a bit more clear than my bad showings <laughs> Okay, so after you've done 57 rows, it looks something like this and you need to um, cast off. And the way I cast 
off is very simple um since this is just for for a sleeve that i will sew together eventually i'm not um doing it in the italian cast off but just in a normal cast off so you knit one stitch and then you go in the stitch behind that one and you just put your needle underneath it and uh, and you just put your needle underneath it and you take it off like that so again i knit a stitch knit 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 i go to not the one I just knit, but the one before that and I take it off and that's what you just do for the whole rows until everything is um, done and you have like a loose sleeve Alright, now for the back um, you will not be knitting in a circle but just straight uh, I casted on 45 stitches already and now I will be doing ribbing for 10 rows just like for the sleeves. I'm doing this on 8mm needles but if you have 7mm needles with like vegan chocolate which is super good if they sell this brand hands off in your country you should taste it it's amazing all right the sun is going down so i hope the lighting is still okay but after having done um the 10 rows as you can see the 10 rows for the ribbing, um, I like to do first uh, one row of normal knit stitches without increasing and one row of purl stitches also without increasing. And if you have been making the ribbing on 7mm needles, now is your time to switch to a larger needle size, to 8mm needles. But I don't need to stitch, I need to switch um, needles. So yes, I'm now just going to do one row of knit stitches, which thankfully I can do in continental knitting. Yay! All right, now it's time to make the increases. As you've seen, I've done a purl and a knit row, um, and you now have 45 stitches on the needle, and I will increase it to make it 55 in total. And the way I do it is, I will make five right leaning in increases um, on the first five stitches, then knit all the stitches in the middle like you would normally, and then on the last five stitches I would knit um, an increase leaning to the left. I'm very terrible at explaining right leaning and left leaning increases, so I will link a tutorial for you. Uh, which is much more clear um, and much easier to follow than my own bad explaining skills in that. So yeah, I'll see you back when I will have in total 55 stitches on a needle. And all right, I now have 55 uh, stitches on the needle in total, making the increases. And now you just have to do a lot of rows of switching between, between purl and knit stitch. Uh, just a normal stockinette stitch um, yeah that's what you have to do to make the whole back and you can make it as cropped or as long as you want I would just measure it um, next to your body and see what you would look good and this is the amount of rows that I made in total in my um, cardigan Ta -da! I've now finished the back as well 
and it's now time to make the two front panels. I've actually already made one and I will just show you the way to make um, the other one. This is one of them. Yeah, this is this side. And as you can see, it's just like a very long rectangle. It's a bit curled up now um, that you make um, a lot of decre decreases in at one point. And I will just show you how to do it. So don't worry about it. It's going to be all right. <laughs> I'll be a little bit shorter with the instructions because I've already explained a lot of stuff but I begin with casting on 18 um, stitches so that's what I'm gonna do now. Okay after having cast on 18 stitches again it's time to do the ribbing and you do the same amount of ribbing as you did for the back which was um, 10 rows of ribbing so that's what I'm gonna do, one by one, one by one ribbing like you've been doing for the whole project already. I'm sick of the old, I'm stuck in the past. If you know what love is, then you'll come and take it back. I'm ripping a ball, I'm flicking an ash, staring out the window, looking back at what we had. So this is what it looks like after um, the ribbing is done. I will now do the same as the back, one row of knit and then one row of purl, and then I'm going to do um, the increases. So now I've done uh, one row of purl and one row of knit as well, and it's time to make the increases. It's a bit difficult to see, but here you can see what I've done. Um, I have 18 stitches on the needle now, and I'm going to increase them to 22 in uh, total so I'll I'll do two on this side and two on this side and that works the same way as on the back so with the uh, increases leaning to the right and the ones leaning to the left so pick up the phone tell me that you love me tell me that you know because this isn't home and I'm ready to go every time I close my eyes Okay, so I've now done um, 44 rows in total. Here's the bottom, and I just worked all the way up. And now it's time to do the decreases to get the shape for like your head to go through, basically. As you can see, uh, on the other side that I already did, I made it uh, to this side, and the other one, of course, has to be mirrored. Um, so when I did this one, I made the decreases in the beginning and for the other one that I'll do now, I have to make the decreases in the end. So I'm going to knit all this, this whole row until there is only uh, the last four stitches left and then I will do make, I will make the decrease. Okay, so now I have just four stitches left and what I will do is I will just knit these two together like that and knit the last two stitches like you would normally. Then the row after this I purl and I make no decreases. Uh, I only make the decreases in the knit rows and you keep decreasing um, every row, so knitting two stitches together every row until you have 18 st stitches left on your needle. And after you have 18 stitches left on your needle, like I have now, here you can see that it has decreased a lot. You just keep uh, purling and knitting back and forth until you have 67 uh, rows in total. And then you just fasten everything off like you did with the back. Wow, look at this, like, scarf. I'm sewing together the pieces of the cardigan. I've done the shoulder seams now. There's always a million different, different ways to sew together, um, knit, pieces but for me the easiest way is just to put them like wrong sides against each other and then sew in between 
but I will link some tutorials. You can also crochet them together, whatever you like. I'm never the best at sewing them together. It never looks super clean, but I'm always kind of fine with that, with the seams um, showing as well. So do whatever you like. My hair is wet because I just showered and washed it, but the cardigan is all sewn together. I do need to do still on um, the ribbing all the way around, but the fit, pretty nice, right? I'm not the happiest with the way the seams look, they look kind of messy, but let's just accept it that way. Uh, so yeah, I'm very happy with it. I think it's very cute. Uh, it's like not really one, it, do, it can't really close, but that's fine. I never wear cardigans clothes anyways. So time for the ribbing and also, of course, most important, the flowers. So here is the sweater and now it's time to do the ribbing all around here. Um, again, I'll show you a tutorial that is a bit more easy to follow than uh, my explanation. But I am using my 8mm uh, needles. You could also use 7mm ones if you have those, but um, I don't have them in the right length. So I'm using 8mm ones. The way that you are gonna do this is by just uh, picking up stitches all along the sides and the neckline. So I have my ball of yarn that I'll first attach with a, a slip knot. To my needle. So this is the right bottom corner. <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> complicated to think like this, but okay. I just go in like this, take the yarn around like that, and I pick up the stitch. And then I just go to the next stitch, take my yarn around. It can be like this or like this. I prefer to do it like this. And I just pick up the stitches like this um, throughout like the whole neckline. So I'll see you back when I have done all of this. So pick up the phone, tell me that you love me, tell me that you know. Cause this isn't Okay, so now you've got all of these stitches like picked up everywhere. Um let me hold it up. You can see so you can see it a bit better. Like this. You have them all around uh picked up. Now, don't knit them together because you will join them in a round and no, it will be uh, super weird. Uh, just start like... This is the part where the yarn is. It's just another tail, but this is the part. And uh, you're just gonna do one by one ribbing, um, doing like Pearl and knit oh. all the time. So one pearl, one knit, just like this, and go all the way around. And I'll come back with you after you finished dunning. This many rows, <laughs> uh, I think I'll do like, I don't know, five or six rows, something like that. But uh, I'll put in the screen how many I did eventually. And I'll come back to you after that. Okay, my cat is laying here now. <laughs> I've now done um, all of these rows and it's raining outside. Um, and... I will start just casting off. You can do an Italian cast off if you want to have it to like the best way possible, but I'm just very lazy, so I will just do like a regular cast off, like the normal knitting style one. So you just 
knit uh, one and then knit another one and you pull off whoop, this one and then you just go ahead knit the next one and take off this one and do that like for the whole <laughs> row like all of the stitches For the flowers, I will link down the tutorial I use. Um, I didn't make the center of the flowers, so I just made like the outside leaves uh, because that was easier for me, but you can do whatever you like to do, of course. the whole morning uh, sewing flowers on um, the cardigan and I'm now halfway done so I still need to do the whole other side and also um, part of the back but I will show you of course how to do it and how do you like my hair I think it's pretty cute like this with space buns but let me know because I always crave validation I guess. Okay, I'll just show you how I um, sew on the flowers. I've made the flowers plain and have not done the inner part uh, yet because the yarn that I'm using for that is very thick so it's easier for me to just sew it on and do like the center uh, like that. I take my tapestry needle and my yarn. Let's see where I want to place it. I think like up here. Firstly, um, those little ends at the back, I just weave them in um, or like I weave them through basically. So I stick the needle just in there. Let me zoom in a little bit, so it's a bit easier to show it. Getting the yarn through. So I just go from the back to here through the front and basically just go through the other side this yarn is very thick so it's um, quite easy to get it all colored like this if I am bold I do it like that I just do that until I am satisfied with the way flower looks and right now that's like this and I weave in the yarn at the end like the tails I cut it off make a knot everything in another line could have been a painter could have studied law instead you on my paintbrush you're my curriculum could have been a sailor, could have been an astronaut Instead I drive for miles just to get to where you are So yeah, I finished it, I put on all the flowers I'll show you a bit better in detail um, after this 
but I'm so in love with it as always. I think with every single project I say the same thing, <laughs> but ah, my cat is coming. Um, but yeah, I really like the way it looks. I think the flowers are really cute. Ah, of course, there's a mess everywhere behind me and the lightning is terrible, but um, the flowers are so cute. I like it so much. Wait, let me put you down. Is lighting okay? I guess it's kind of okay. I have to stand up on my toes <laughs> to be able to fit in the frame. But yeah, this is it. I put the flowers all over it. This is the back. I think it's so cute. I like it so much. Um, thank you so much for watching and for always uh, being there for me and following me in my crochet and knitting journey. Uh, let me know what project you're working on and don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed watching it and if you are also going to make the same cardigan show me the pictures uh, my instagram is always in the description box thank you so much stay safe and see you next time bye doi <laughs>